Hello. Hello. I hope you enjoyed today's program. And uh, that's just the first of three days. Yay! Yay. <laughs> so, um, before we've got the reception, um, I like to give you a quick rundown, and it'll be quick. I know everybody's hungry and tired um, of the paper selection process uh, this year. And, uh, well, we start with the obvious. So, um, the accepted papers out of the submissions we received. Um, over these three days, there will be 28 presentations, um, which the program committee selected out of 97 submissions uh, that we got this year. And um, out of those, uh, there are two um, functional pearls and two experience reports. Now, um, in order to uh, select those papers, the program committee and the external reviewers who uh, were asked by program committee members to um, provide reviews uh, produced uh, overall 299 reviews. That's a lot of work um, to come up with this program. And um, to make sure that each of these papers would uh, be reviewed by at least three independent uh, researchers. And uh, after all the reviews were in, as is quite customary at ICFP uh, these days, we had a 72-hour author response period where authors could reply um, and, uh, to factual errors which had been made in the reviews. And I think this is a, a very useful process. Most of the time the reviews are accurate, but uh, reviewers are humans too. They can overlook things. And, and in some papers, um, I think it, it did actually alter the PC discussion uh, about the paper. So, so I'm, I'm very fond of this mechanism, although it creates quite a bit of additional work. And um, this year I decided to not allow any submissions from the program committee members in order to avoid any um, potential conflict of interest uh, with this. So now, these are the years, the, uh, the numbers from this year. So how do we compare? What's ICFP look like over time? So I, I kind of I went into the digital library and got uh, the data for the last six years of ICFP. And as you can say, um, submissions are more or less steady, but there is some glitter, especially in recent years. And um, accepted papers uh, behave quite similar, but are even more stable, I would say. So uh, it seems to be a quite um, stable system. And um, now, uh, if we look at the special paper categories, then unfortunately I wasn't able to find all the data for the functional pearls easily. So there are some gaps in the data. But uh, as you can see, it's harder to get a functional pearl accepted than a regular paper, uh, which probably coincides with the folklore it's quite hard to write a good functional pearl, and uh, so the success rate here is, is not quite as good as with, with other papers. Uh, on the other hand, with experience reports, which are a much uh, younger introduction of a paper category, they started in, when they started out, we had a lot of experience reports, uh, but very few of them were accepted, because again, it's not easy to write an experience report. From an experience report, we expect a lesson, something which, uh, uh, a message you can take home, but we don't require original research. So uh, distilling that is, is not easy, and, uh, but it seems people have figured out the formula, because although we don't have a lot of submissions for experience reports in the last two years, um, they're pretty much always successful. So that's interesting, I thought. Um, if we look at the distribution of the submissions, over the um, locations of the authors, um, then that's the, the picture we get. Um, now, more interesting than the authors, because different numbers of, uh, different papers have different numbers of authors, is what, what's the distribution by paper? But then, uh, in order to get that number, we have to assign fractional weights, depending on the numbers of authors per paper. And then, uh, if we do that, we get, get a picture like that. Um, so it's interesting to see that the UK is the most successful country <laughs> in producing SSP papers. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, but
but uh, there's a long history of great functional programming work there, so that's maybe not so surprising. Um, and and uh, another way to uh, configure that data is to combine all the European countries into one graph and one bar, and then we see <laughs> Europe contributes a lot of papers, um, <laughs> but maybe we have to work on the quality. Now, <laughs> we, um, it would be interesting to see that data for um, for a year where the conference is um, organized or is, is held uh, in the US because um, one theory might be or conjecture might be that usually we get more submissions from wherever the con conference is held because it's easier for students to attend and so on but then those authors are probably authors which don't regularly submit to ICFP so their uh, chances of success are maybe not so high because of lack of experience. Um, I don't know, that, that's possibly so, but it would be interesting to see what's happening uh, next year. So just John, if you want to <laughs> kind of continue this uh, diagram next year. And um, then the other thing I always find interesting is like you've got these people who submit a week in advance and there's no update in EasyChair and you guess maybe it's a paper they submitted before somewhere else. But, but then there are those people who like in the in the last half hour there's one update after another and <laughs> what's the better strategy right don't you wonder I wonder so I thought well now I got the data <laughs> find out so if we look at it um, at the submissions blocked by 12 hour block then we see um, well they increase towards the um, deadline and uh, you may wonder well people submit Many people submit multiple times, they update their paper. What's in the graph? Well, in the graph is the time of the last update, basically submission of the final version, right? And um, uh, I actually did the numbers, not so easy to see in the graph, but I actually did the calculation. The, uh, the acceptance rate in these blocks are basically the same. So it doesn't matter whether you submit 24 hours in advance or 12 hours in advance, but Let's zoom in on the last six hours. <laughs> now you know what to avoid, right? <laughs> That's my gift to you. More better, this is how you take this graph and now you know how to be more successful at getting a paper. <laughs> so this year we don't have um, a printed proceedings. We save the trees, um, which is good. And um, uh, I, I hope you all got the information on where to download uh, the proceedings. And they, all the papers will be available for download um, for an entire year. So that's a new thing um, ACM is trialing. And um, all, this, all this program um, required uh, a lot of work by, by the members of the program committee. If everybody of the program committee who is here could please uh, stand up. So people can see who you are. Um, they had to read all these papers we met in Copenhagen, which is great, of course, Copenhagen. The yeah. um, Fritz Henglein's group at DECU was so generous um, allowing us to hold the PC meeting, hosting the PC meeting. Um, so uh, please thank the PC uh, for all the Okay, that's it from me. So next uh, will be um, the reception from the city of Göteborg. And um, I pass the mic over. Yes. Yeah. So there will be this reception generously hosted by the city. There will be some drinks, some small things to eat, an opportunity to mingle and to watch the posters in the SRC competition. <laughs>